Yahoo gets a new CEO, the Nexus 7 has arrived, and the two largest mobile OS manufacturers continue to grow in popularity. Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth episode of Tech and Coffee's Tech News Week. I'm your host, Duke Carrico, and joining me this evening from Louisiana is Andrew Rubin from Virginia, Bruce Turner. From Washington State, Guy Cook. And joining me this evening, Jeff Zoss. From North Carolina, Joseph Youssef. From Ohio, Larry Petrie. Also from North Carolina, George Dosher. And from Florida, Yvonne R. Welcome, everyone. How are we doing this evening? Good. Excellent. Excellent. How are you doing? Fantastic. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, probably the biggest tech news story this week was the fact that uh, Google employee number 20 left Google to become the CEO of Yahoo. Let's put this in perspective. The fifth CEO that Yahoo has had in the last five years. And, uh, gang... Let me ask you, is this what Yahoo needs to uh, uh, become the prominent giant that it used to be? It's a major coup for Yahoo. Um, I hope that her experience with the Google products is going to translate to bringing the, the products that we love for Yahoo back into the limelight. Things like uh, Yahoo Groups and Flickr may once again see the light of day and have a, a future. I definitely think they need something, and she is very charismatic, she's very go forward, and she's very inventive, at least I think she is. But I think Yahoo's problem is Yahoo. It's not just about one person. It's about the corporate culture of being able to move. And in the last five years, they haven't been very good at listening to their CEOs, or at least trying to move to go somewhere. So hopefully they'll be able to change their momentum and maybe do something different. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I think job one is um, finishing the statement. I think Yahoo is. And, you know, what does Yahoo do? Because if you ask anyone on this panel, I, I'm not too sure people would say Yahoo's a media company, Yahoo is business products. I mean, what does Yahoo do? Amazon we know, Google we know. Yahoo is kind of like a don't really know, and she has to come out with that vision of what, what the company is going to be doing. Mm. That's my guess. That's, pro, that's job one. Yeah, the uh, sense... Uh, go ahead, Guy. You started before I did. You can go ahead. <laughs> okay. I was just going to say the sense in the tech world seems to be uh, there's a, that seems to be a little more optimistic with her than it's been with uh, previous choices, and really it's a win-win situation for her. If she turns Yahoo around then she's a superstar. If she doesn't, Yahoo was a bad company going down anyway, and it wasn't her fault. So I think, I think it's a great opportunity for her. I applaud her courage. And, and I'm going to back up what Joseph said. The problem is that Yahoo, not who the CEO is, it's their inability to validate their services. I, I it really makes sense to me that I want to use that service, that mail service, that group service, that Picasso service, once I validate it and go, yeah, that's the right choice for me, then they will succeed. You're right. I think they really need to figure out a way to reinvent themselves. I'm not trying to say they need to go in the ways of Amazon and say we're going to do books, but they need to figure out some sort of niche that can anchor all of its other products and services together in one, in one cohesive thing. People need a reason to want to use Yahoo, and I, I'm hoping that as a former you know, product manager, she can really pull it together. That's something they really need. They need to focus. And Yahoo needs to follow something and do something to change to, to get it to go. Additionally, Yahoo has had a brain drain during the last maybe half a decade. Um, and she is a geek's geek. And there may be people willing to come back, you know, to her, there may be programmers who think that Yahoo has a future and are willing to go work for Yahoo and work under her um, instead of leaving the company. 
she may pull some people from Google that she right. knows. One one of the things that's got to happen is they've got to build up the uh, confidence in the company among its own employees. I read an article today that said 90% of the employees at Google would recommend to a friend that they come to work at Google. That number at Yahoo is 48%. So they need to get the team on board first, have a valid product, and then have leadership that will take them into the next decade. And yep. they'll be around a while. The yeah. geeks don't want Yahoo to go away. That's the bottom line. They they need to rise up and come to that challenge. Yep. Yeah, that, that was actually, you, guys are, you guys are touching on a question that I had. Uh, they have been they've been bleeding out talent for the last several years. They can't. Uh, I, I think about every major player. I think now works at Facebook that used to work at at the Yahoo. Uh, can is she the uh, is she the CEO that can bring in the magical talent that can build Yahoo and into something special? I think so. Um, I think that uh, uh, they first of all they can't do any better. They're already spiraling down. They're going to ways of AOL and stuff. So um, and like Yvonne said, I think she's the geek's geek. Um, she uh, they can't do any worse. They can't do any better. I think she's a good choice, uh, even though she's never been a CEO before, but she's managed uh, giant tech departments uh, and uh, within Google, so I don't see any harm in it, and I think it's a good coup for Yahoo, and it's a, and it's a major downturn for, for Google. She was one of the major players in Google, and now she's gone from there. Well, yeah, I uh, when this story broke, these are some things that I learned about her. I mean, I, I had heard of her. I was aware of her. I really dis didn't know what she did or how she played within Google. And uh, I, I found these things interesting. She is known for working 90-hour work weeks. She's estimated to be worth over $300 million. I mentioned she was employee number 20, started in Google in 1999. And when she left Google, she was vice president of local maps and location services. Uh, do you think, uh, I'm going to ask Guy this question. Guy, do you think that uh, uh, she can do something with local and Yahoo? Um, well, that's part of a conversation we've had already. I think that the, 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 uh, the jungle that Yahoo exists in needs to have someone that's going to build a better local search than exists now. And what I mean by better is that the businesses that are hidden in their corporate veil behind a post office box aren't able to get into Google places the way that a brick and mortar storefront on Main Street can do. So until they come up with a recipe for the best local search, and she's well known for developing a good product, then it's kind of wait and see. It's, it, it's crazy enough it just could happen. It just could work. I know yesterday I told you, well, I, I, I know this is going to fail, but now I'm going, yeah, you know, there's, there's a part of me that goes, I think Yahoo's going to be around. I'd, I'd like to see it be around. It's been around since I've been on the Internet, and I hate to see it go away. But do, do you think that Yahoo is a search engine? I mean, do you think that's who they're going to be in the future? Should they be or should they not I think, be? I don't, I don't think, I think so. I don't think that's their direction. I don't think it should be direction, and hopefully she understands that. Yeah, they're, they're they've got several Google products that that they use in developing software that are kind of like not talked about because it's just on the developer side. They're very very strong in the market that people still use today. Um, the YUI interface, um, the Yahoo wireframes that were, they were one of the first ones to come out with that for site development. Uh, there's things in the Yahoo uh, barn besides that big huge elephant called search that could take them to the, the next generation of internet applications and use thereof. Um, we know that mobile is going to be a big part of our future. It's already uh, the lion in the jungle as it were and their in interaction with that community and how they develop products for mobile could be their next strong suit. Did they lose their, their niche in, in search? Because at one point in time, they were the leader in search, I mean, before Google came into play. That's true. They did lose that, that battle. In fact, they're not even providing searches anymore. They outsourced that to, uh, to Microsoft through, uh, through Bing. Uh, through Bing. But, but, you know, right at first, that didn't matter because they had these groups, things going on. You had Yahoo Mail. 
I mean, Yahoo was uh, it was it was almost like Facebook is today. It's where the majority of people went when they went to the internet. You know. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I still have a list on Yahoo that started in 1998, Internet Web Developers, and it's got about 110 people that are just hanging on, because I guess we don't know better. Well, you know, if I, I still use Yahoo. I mean, I, I have a Yahoo account. I look at my news, basically, as uh, I like the way that's kind of formatted on my desktop to, to look at the news, but I, I, I'm with Andrew. I, I don't... I, I think you're... I think they've got to go with considered more of a media company than anything else. They have to move in that direction because everything else is taken up. You know, and they have to carve out a new, a new way. So um, I think she can, she can walk the walk, and she knows she's uh, she's uh, got the drive to do it. So it's going to be a personal test, probably. Okay, I I just uh, uh I I just want to say this on a personal note. You know, time's going to tell. How she does as a CEO and and uh, as a follower of tech, I, I personally am looking forward to seeing what she does with Yahoo, and I'm pulling for her. But I, I think what was really brilliant about this right out of the gate, you know, is uh, we get this announcement that uh, that she's the new CEO of Yahoo, and the next day, I, I mean, you know, everybody's a buzz that you got all this news, and then the next day it starts dropping off. And she posted Twitter and Facebook, I believe, and she says, uh, uh, oh, by the way, uh, I'm pregnant. And that just started the buzz all back up again, and I loved it. And I thought, personally, I think this was brilliant, whether it was planned or unplanned. It was brilliant on Yahoo's part because everybody's looking and everybody's excited and what she's going to do. And, oh, by the way, she's fixing to have a baby, too. And, and like I say, I, I think this is this is the the first time in a long time that I'm hearing people talk positive about Yahoo. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I think that uh, I don't know if it was a stunt, a media stunt. I don't know that it matters. But uh, it's it's you know I I haven't been to the Yahoo page in years, and I've been on there, you know trying to see where they can move and see what they can do. So they could read. Oh, sorry, Jeff, I just muted you. There's still a few things on Yahoo that I use and I would like I would like them to spit and polish them, you know, make them new, make them exciting again. I, I would hope they redo Yahoo Messenger and make it more uh, Linux integration friendly, but a lot of people in Asia that still heavily use um, Yahoo Messenger and a lot of their services, and being able to have better integration with its products and services, make it smoother, more integrated, even with Linux and as well as the other stuff, that would go a long way ref uh, in in people's eyes and seeing it being refreshed, saying, "Hey, I've got new." I've got ten dollars that the baby's first words will be Yahoo. Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I bet I bet within three months there's a total redesign on the website. Um, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, I, like I say, I'm I'm pulling for Yahoo, and uh, uh, you know uh, I, I think all of us here, you know, we're using the Google Hangout right now, and and we're uh, uh, we're all fans of of the Google services, but. Uh, Let's face it, competition's a great thing. And Jeff, you mentioned news, and uh, you know I think Yahoo News is still. I prefer it much more to Google News. I'll just say that. Uh, okay, move on here, gang. And uh, the Nexus Seven. You know, uh, Google debuted it. Uh, they said that they were going to ship it mid July. And, and they've made good on that promise. They've started shipping it now, and, and you can get it. Uh, of course, Jeff didn't get his, and Jeff, the only person we can blame for that is you. <laughs> but uh, all jokes aside, uh, it, you know, it started to appear in stores, and, and people were uh, just snatching it up like crazy. But I'm starting to see some news articles about people reporting that uh, they're getting their opening units, and they've got... Uh, Loose screws in them. You got uh, improperly glued parts, uh, dead pixels on the display, and some units just die just after a few uh, 
few hours use. Uh, I don't think this is what Google was hoping for on a flagship product. Uh, any comments on that? Jeff was just afraid of getting the uh, the tablet because he was afraid he couldn't handle the size. That's all that was. Yeah, I wanted something a little bit bigger because I had such big hands. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I guess, you think uh, maybe that they rushed it to market in an effort to uh, have enough units ready for everyone like Jeff that pre-ordered so no one went around saying, I didn't get mine, and then they suffered the consequence of rapid mass production and that their higher failure rate? Possibly, but you know, I don't think Google's going to put out a product that doesn't work. I mean, I haven't, you know, uh, followed the story that much, but I think that it's just another one of those uh, antenna things like we've, you know, had with exactly. iPhone 4, you know? I think that's what this is. It's, it's, uh, it's a media coup by someone else that's trying to push down Google. Well, Just like they the, did with Apple. the real question is, are they manufacturer decent, de uh, manufacturer's defects or design flaws? Manufacturer's defects, that's easy to fix through the refinement process. Design flaws, that's a problem at the very beginning where it has to be retooled and redone. That's two different things that can be done uh, as opposed to the uh, antenna gate issue. I can't, I can't see it being a design flaw if they spend all this money. I'm sure, you know, whoever designed this is making a lot of money and uh, yeah. they spend right. a lot of money in time. Sure. Just, I, keep in mind, this is Asus. I mean, Asus right. has been making great products. Yeah. Yeah, it's They're not, not a first tablet. Exactly. And, and this same tablet debuted at CES back in January, and Google pulled Asus into a room and said, hey, you know, can we stick uh, Google on this and call it ours, and can you get the price down? And that's where this was born. This, uh, It's not like they started from scratch two months ago and said, hey, Jesus, here's what we want you to build us, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I think they built an amazing product, and, and so far everything sounds like more like for manufacturing, not actual design. I haven't really heard anyone say this is a problem. It's more like there's a screw loose. I mean, you know. Okay. Uh, how how can I put this? Uh, is Amazon is Amazon going to sell this tablet? No. This, no. That, will you see it in an Amazon store? No. Not at all. Uh, well, you know what? It depends if they have a replacement to the Kindle Fire. I don't think they're. I think they're coming out with the Kindle Fire, and they're not. There's not going to be any competition. You know, a Amazon sells a whole lot of Android branded tablets. Why wouldn't they sell the Nexus Seven? Yeah, I don't, I don't know think why they, they sell it under Google. I'm there's sorry, a new I'm Kindle sorry. Fire coming, like Joseph said. They're they're on the drawing board with a new Kindle Fire. That's gonna. Oh, go oh, you know, they've got a Kindle Fire now. It's a seven inch, and and they're still selling all these other Android branded tablets. Why wouldn't they sell the Nexus Seven? If Amazon I, sells it, it's going to be from its third-party vendors, not directly from Apple. No. Uh, if Amazon's going to be a, the class, continue to be the class act that they are awesome. today, they'll go ahead and put it on their market. Of I course, certainly and agree. they're going to make lots of money off of it. Sorry, right, that's they're true. They're in the yeah. business of making money. <laughs> no, they're in, in the, the end. end. What they're going to do is, you know, they, what they should do is come out with another Amazon Prime app that fix that works on all tablets, right? And then, you know, let's just use their hardware to help sell their products. Yeah. You know? let's, you know, vote. I mean, let's vote, Duke. Let's thumbs up, thumbs down. Is Amazon going to sell the Nexus 7? And then, and then it's recorded for all time. Thumbs in the neutral position. Is Amazon going to sell the Nexus tablet? Uh, looks like I've got two downs. Two downs. All right. Uh, I'm, gl I'm glad Joseph was right about that. Yeah. <laughs> Larry did say I was right, and Larry is always right. He okay. knows. Uh, uh, in spite, and, and we let's face it, we don't know the scope of the problems, but there are some forums reporting some problems. And, uh, you know, this, uh, this particular tablet came out of the gate really strong. I'm going to ask you to put on your... Uh, your uh, uh, what is it, uh, the Karnak? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I want you to tell me, is uh, will this this particular device, is it going to break? 
any kind, of, like the Kindle Fire right now is probably the best-selling Amazon tablet. Will this break the the uh, Amazon Kindle Fire record in sales? Hmm, no. I think no. yes. I think yes, provided that Kindle's repl Kindle Fire's replacement takes too long to come out. Okay, let's do this right here. Thumbs in the neutral position. Will the Nexus 7 surpass the Kindle Fire sales? All right, I've got one neutral. I've got one, two, three, four downs. Okay, so, uh, wow. How come you don't think it will, Yvonne? It's a different market. Why you know what I read books? And people buy a lot, a lot of books, you know, and you have non-technical people buying the fire. Right. The and Nexus is for, you know, geeks like you and me. It's not, it's competing against a, a lot of other things. Yeah. The uh, fire is competing against one or two other major things. You, you know what my, my thought on it is, is that, we're not going to, I mean, this Nexus is going to be here for a little while, and they'll have something else. That's why it's not going to have a life long enough to, you know, we'll have another Nexus before that. They're going to improve it and make it better. So I plus think in another year we'll have another device. Plus, you got to remember that Kindle did take some of the ear out of the sales, right? I mean, there's only, if I just bought a Kindle like two years ago, am I buying a Nexus 7 today? Probably not. So that sale is gone for well, typically five years, right? So and before it outlives its usefulness, you know. So um, I think that that out, and I think Ron's right. It's two different markets. I don't think you can put Amazon Prime where you can watch movies on your um, uh, Kindle, right? I don't think you can get that app on other tablets. So they're going to. Well, here's another here's another consideration. There's a lot of people that bought that Kindle Fire because it was $199. That's why it became such a great seller. I wonder how many of those Kindle Fire owners are going to say, you know what, I think I want to replace this because I want a, I want a camera, I want a microphone, I want to be able to do Skype and Hangouts and those kinds of things. I want to have access to the full Android experience in the marketplace, and they're going to gift that Kindle Fire to somebody else, and they're going to get a Nexus 7. Just a thought. That's why you were thumbs up. <laughs> yes. All right. Any other comments? Your thumbs up on regifting. <laughs> I, I have. I do have one comment. Jeff, are you using the ATR twenty one hundred? No, I, I am not. Oh, okay. What are you using right now? I'm using the same mic that we discussed uh, in our last Tech and Coffee show. It's just called. Uh, it's Audio Technica mic. Hmm. Uh, mixer. Why are you, you are you enjoying my my vocal? Um, I, I I really am. I just want to bring up from what we were discussing in our last episode, and we'll wait to find out in our next episode which one I'm going to be purchasing uh, mm -hmm. for our hangout. Nice little promo tease. Uh, I'm using Brother Bruce's proximity method to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's it. All right, guys. Uh, get back up here. Nelson reported this week that Android is growing faster than Apple. However, both companies are growing and are edging out the competition. So I want to ask you guys, where is BlackBerry going to be this time next year? That's a, that's a big question. With the BlackBerry 10, I'm very excited to see that phone. I mean, I am not a BlackBerry fan, I'm not a RIM fan, but that, that BlackBerry 10, I think it's called, looks awesome. I haven't seen any indication that BlackBerry has learned from their past uh, you know, mistakes. They, they've got a great back-end product. The actual bare bones of it is actually fantastic and better in a lot of ways. Than, than Android and uh, and Apple is, especially in terms of uh, using it for business uses. But they haven't really figured out a way to renew and refresh their user interface in a touch-friendly manner. The bigger question is, what is Microsoft going to do? And that was the next question. Where's Windows Phone going to be? Where's Microsoft and Windows Phone going to be this time next year? Right now, we're looking at about 55% uh, of Americans now own a smartphone. 
okay? Uh, and, and we all know that, uh, you know, Android and Apple, two very capable uh, mobile operating systems, and they're just growing in popularity. And, and I don't know about you guys, but... But once you kind of get rooted in an ecosystem, you know, such as uh, iOS or Android, and you start considering upgrading your device, uh, if you're like me, you kind of go with what you know. I've already got apps. I've got my phone set up to make it personal. It's kind of like upgrading a computer, you know. I, I might upgrade my computer and get a faster processor with more capability, but I also look forward to getting those those apps that I go to every day, the weather app, the Google Voice, the stuff that, you know, I can't live without, I know how it's going to work on Android, you know. Uh, I just can't, I'm, I, I don't, I have trouble envisioning what BlackBerry or Windows Phone is going to do to make me want to switch. Right. You know what? I think I don't think Windows is going to be a competitor in that nature. They're going to be the third option. They're going to be the enterprise option, just like they always are. And I think that uh, Apple and Android are both going to keep growing until we, you know, we hit that point where they don't grow anymore. Well, yeah, that, no, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say Nokia hitched their wagon to Microsoft's Windows Seven. Windows Phone 7, and now you see what's happening with Nokia. Their 900 phone, it's, it's, it's just sinking and sinking. And then Microsoft goes ahead. While Windows 7, Mobile 7 are, are being sold, they announce Windows Mobile 8. And it just doesn't seem like they're, they're managing their, their mobile market well. And I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm surprised. I fly uh, every month, and I'm, I see a whole bunch of... Uh, Blackberries uh, on on these planes, these businessmen. So um, I think if you know, there's uh, it's maybe like Yahoo. Is it possible BlackBerry can turn it around? Uh, it maybe, but um, but they, they BlackBerry still... has a foothold in very large companies, and right. it's going to stay there. Um, they don't necessarily need need the touch screen or need the capabilities that or what we're using in the smartphone arena. They're using it for something entirely different. But I don't see how Windows is going to squeeze into the market at all. Well, don't forget, back in the day before Android and iPhone came out, if you weren't using BlackBerry, you were using uh, a Windows mobile phone for business because they're the only ones really that had an infrastructure that can handle business stuff. You know, uh, they can we're encrypt using messages. Palm. You were using a Palm device, yeah. not a Windows phone. Or Symbian. I, th I think that the Yvonne said it very accurately when she said businesses have the BlackBerry. I'm under a non-disclosure agreement for a company I worked for in 2009 that sold BlackBerry servers to huge Fortune 500 companies for their employees to use the BlackBerry phone. That's why Bruce is seeing them on the planes to this day. They have their infrastructure in place. Their procedures and protocols are written. Everyone's trained for it. The cost of retraining them to do the Droid or retraining them to do the Apple phone isn't in the picture in this economy right now. Or it's, rewriting all the apps to now yeah, go exactly. to, uh, you know, rather than BlackBerry, go to something else. Yeah, they don't want to do it. I remember BlackBerry had a huge foothold on um, in, in the foreign market as well. Like, you know, so it's not just the yeah. U.S. market. So, so Black Duke's question, uh, where's BlackBerry next year? It'll be here. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it'll be here too. I, I, I just want to say uh, just a generalization. As I've watched uh, BlackBerry the last few years, it, it reminds me of uh, Palm OS about, uh, goodness, uh, about eight years ago. You know, uh, Palm, uh, they were such innovators in, in the smartphone arena and they just stagnated, and it's just like uh, they 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 never would admit that competitors were were outdoing them. You know, they just uh, uh, anyway. I, I you know I I've I've never owned a BlackBerry product. With that said, I hate I would hate to see BlackBerry go away, and I hope they can turn it around. Like I say, competitions uh, more competition is the the more that you you guys and myself. Uh, we win as the consumers. All right, I'm going to move on, gang. Uh, I just want to say one thing about BlackBerry, though. 
Um, I, I've supported them for years. I'm actually BlackBerry certified, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I, I don't think they're going to go anywhere because there's so many big companies that use BlackBerry. And like Yvonne said, there's so many apps in place. Uh, even if somebody else takes it over and it's not BlackBerry anymore, it's still the infrastructure there. I'm sorry, I just wanted to say that. Oh, no, no, I appreciate that. And, uh, uh, you know, messaging, they're legendary for their messaging, and messaging is, is still an important aspect in the smartphone world. So, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about uh, Office 13, guys. Microsoft uh, debuted Office 365. It's got cloud storage. going to feature Skype and Yammer. And I don't know, but the last thing I read about Yammer, there were some serious problems with that uh, platform. Uh, basically, once you added someone, you couldn't get rid of them. If anybody doesn't know, by the way, Yammer is Twitter for business. Uh, uh, it's uh, Office 13 is also going to be resigned for tablet use. And uh, let's get to some questions here. First of all, our business is going to going to quickly migrate to Office 2013? Not at all. No. I don't think they will, to be honest with you. Um, I think they're going to take their time migrating. There's so many infrastructures still using XP. There's so many uh, using uh, um, Win 7, so they're using like Office 07 or Office 10. Um, and not only that, it's not backwards compatible, so anything Vista below, you can't use the newest Office on. So, As opposed you know, to why Windows. Would they move? As opposed to Windows 7, which everyone hated because they went to the new ribbon, when, uh, Office 2000, sorry, did I say Windows 7? Sorry, Office 2007, I apologize. Um, Office 2010 was really where uh, Office 2007 should have been, where it kind of combined the old file menu with the ribbon. It was more of a combined hybrid kind of feel. So I think a lot of people are much more okay with that interface. And, and after waiting so long to go from uh, Office 07, Sorry, Office 03 to Office 2007, and now they're all doing Office 2010. I think people are happy with Office 2010 at least for a while now. I just don't think pe companies see the expense. I don't have accurate count of numbers, but the, the majority, the lion's share of support calls that I get for Office questions are using Office 2003. They never switched. They don't want to learn a new tool. If it works, don't fix it. Why spend the money on training if what I got will do email? What I got will do word processing. You see Larry nodding his head. Yes, I know I'm right now. A lot of big companies they absolutely hated going to Office 2007 because when it came to dealing with support, well, it was easy to file uh, to to walk someone through a file menu over the phone, file settings, whatever. How do you say click on the ribbon? You know, it was much harder to go at, and I think that was. I think that was Microsoft's downside to listening to its consumers saying they wanted more options in front of their faces. It just made it much more difficult to try and help them remotely. So. Let, let me ask this question, and this might not be a fair question, because I know I know that uh, any office which you buy is going to be pretty much for an enterprise environment, but uh, uh, who, who here on the panel is using uh, uh, a Microsoft Office product for personal use? Any any of us? Okay, Joseph, you are. Uh, no one else. Uh, listen, I, I've got it installed uh, on this laptop right now. The uh, I, but I don't use it, and the biggest reason why I have it installed is uh, uh, because the company that I work for we're uh, about fourteen thousand employees, and if if you work at my company, you're going to have a Windows Seven machine, and it's going to have Office twenty ten installed on it. Okay, I mean that's that's pretty much standard. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see my company upgrading to 2013. Now, eventually, you know, maybe uh, I'm going to guess, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. We're we're running some pretty old HP computers right now. Uh, probably uh, we're probably looking most of them, be them uh, laptops or desktops. We're probably looking at about five years old. Uh, I, I I don't see us upgrading. I might be wrong. I might not know what I'm talking about. I'm not uh, uh, I'm not as closely tied with the IT department as I once was. Uh, so I'm not hearing the rumors. 
but uh, I, I'm going to be really surprised if we, in, in the next, uh, I'm going to say in the next year and a half, have upgraded to 2013. Well, I mean, I work in an IT department in charter schools in New Orleans, and, and basically we skipped from 2003 to 2010. We didn't go with 2007. And truthfully, I, I think that we're not going to go to 2013. We, I mean, most of our students use Google Docs uh, for that feature. You know, it, it works well enough for them. And, and the administrators use 2010, and it works good. Why, why spend the money? We just I, spent money to upgrade to 2010. I, I think 2007 was a real painful thing for, for Microsoft. They added all of these extra features to do integration and add whole new certifications because mm, they wanted to create something that was more robust for people who weren't developers, but the people who weren't developers didn't want to deal with it because most enterprise IT environments made all of their developers create all those fun, fancy gadgets and and forms and stuff that integrated with mail and back office stuff using SharePoint and all that other stuff. So all those extra features that Office 2007 could have done, many didn't utilize. So it was just regular Word, just like it was 2007. And so now I think people are like, well, we never really used all that stuff. This was really painful to try and get our new, new users to train. Maybe we should go for something cheaper. Well, there's something we're not talking about here. It's not just training. I mean, that's not the only cost. It's not just buying the software and training. There's a cost associated with installing it on all the computers. Okay, even if you're able to do that remotely, that's time of so you know, depending on how big the company is, of engineers or you know, tech support, whoever's doing it, installing it. There's also um, the time spent testing it to make sure that it will work in their environment for the things that they want to do and what they use it for, as well as passing all of their security protocols, you know, and buttoning it down tight for your average enterprise customer, that, or, you know, a client. That takes a lot of time. It, it, it takes a lot of effort. And companies aren't in a position right now to be spending all that money and time to do or, it. I mean, or, training is just one aspect, and the last time, you know, uh, I don't hear many people get, get going to mass training anymore. They just install products and expect you to learn how to use them. There isn't a huge amount of money spent on training. The money is, is spent on other things. In what I do, uh, in what I do actually, um, for work, I, I support a lot of office products, and there are third-party companies that produce plugins and stuff for like, like say Office 2003. And when, uh, when the corporation moved to 07, a lot of those plugins failed to work. And so they had to either have developers fix those plugins. And a lot of those are specialty plugins made for my company. So in essence, I can't see them pushing out 2013 just like that across the infrastructure, like Yvonne says, without excessively testing them. And apparently, in some cases, you know, uh, they didn't. So. Yeah, it's uh, uh, with a company the size of mine, it's always been a challenge any time we upgrade. And and Yvonne, you, you made uh, very good points. When you were talking, I was thinking, uh, uh, you know, we, we do run Office products, but we run a, a, a lot of other software also. And there's always compatibility issues and security, uh, and and I love it when you get these pop-ups to do passwords and so forth, and and when you you call IT to complain about it, they'll tell you every time it's a feature. Oh, it just drives me crazy. But anyway, uh, yeah. So Larry, you upgrading to Office uh, 2013? Yes or no? No, Larry said. All right, brother. Yeah, I'll tell you, and uh, uh, I, I'm just going to say, uh, listen, I, I'm not complaining about Office. I, I live and die by it on, with my real job. But, you know, when uh, I'm home here on my computer, I found uh, Google Docs to uh, really rock for me. Uh, I do like Google Docs. Okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, let me try and get back up here to the top. I've got some... Uh, there was... Two news stories that came out here today or uh, this week that about Google Plus, and uh, surprisingly, it wasn't uh, 
It wasn't, well, Google's a ghost town. It was actually, uh, one of the articles said that Google Plus reportedly saw a 43% jump in U.S. visitors during June. The other article was that Google Plus debuted with ACSI, Customer Satisfaction, they're a, a marketing company, and they did a survey, and Google scored the highest. They scored almost 80% satisfaction, and what does that mean? Well, Facebook scored about uh, 60%, and uh, Twitter was a little bit higher than that, and the question that I want to ask the group is... Uh, a 43% jump in U.S. visitors, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a large jump. Have you felt that in your streams? I yes. Think, I think so, and I think not. I mean, I come to Google Plus for the Hangouts, and I use a stream as a tool now. I mean, I'm getting more and more used to using the stream, but that's not why I come to Google Plus. So hopefully people are coming here, the Hangouts, and they learn to use it and learn to like it. I, I think it's a spurt, personally. I mean, look at the timing. A lot of kids are coming out of school. They're the ones who tend to, to goof around, trying to explore new things. And, uh, and that would happen to be around the time when um, Google made all those changes to Google Hangouts, totally reinventing it, where people were more easily able to see uh, public Hangouts from Google uh, Plus without having to use uh, third-party plugins such as Hangout, Camp and, Hangout Canopy and My Hangouts. There's two uh, content management systems they support at the company. One is WordPress and one is Joomla. And just to see, I set up a circle for WordPress and one for Joomla. The WordPress one has doubled since it started, and the Joomla one is almost triple in size. And the target is to reach not end users, but rather developers and people at the support level. People like Andrew is who I want to interact with and learn from. And it's 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 growing um, scary big really fast. Well, I think it's all I think it's just a combination of um, first of all, Google started advertising, right? They advertised on TV, major TV stations about their services, and you know, they, and all the news articles about Nexus Seven and all that stuff is just beginning to pay off, and people are beginning to notice it more and more, and uh, these are the benefits of it. It's a great product. It's better than Facebook, and it's a different kind of um, social media tool that people can use in different ways. Yeah, there's two the things I see. Thing One, go ahead, Vaughn. No, you're the ladies first. That, okay, thank you. The other thing that has increased is the sale of Android phones, which come integrated, the newer ones, with G+. Good point. So you're going to have more people making accounts, just simply because there's more Android phones being sold. They may not be using it in the same way that we are in this Hangout, but they're using it. Yeah, I agree. And they lowered the age requirement, uh, going back to what somebody else was saying, and, and that age requirement happened right at summertime when school was getting out, and so you have a lot of young people that are visiting. And then I agree, too, with Andrew. I think there are a lot of people who want to experience a Hangout, and in order to experience a Hangout, they set up the Google Plus account in order to have the Hangout experience. Um, I, I've seen a number of people like that. I think they cheated, but Facebook cheated first with trying to get younger people to come in. But, but but I think there's good news in this report because once people get here, they're, 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 the customer satisfaction statistics that you mentioned there do, once they come here and they kind of get the feel for it, you know, hey, I think I'll stick around a while. I think yeah, I'll hang out. Um, I've shown yeah. this to customers and taken them through. Uh, we could brainstorm about your new uh, shopping cart solution in a Google Hangout. Well, what's that? I show them. They love it. They just simply go, this is what interaction is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And as you well know, if you have happy customers, you win that, that battle called market share yeah. because they're going to tell their friends about it. Larry is telling his friends about Google Hangouts. I know he is. Yeah. Did anyone um, Larry, see you Mike? Larry, you telling people? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Did anyone see Mike Down's um, post about uh, uh, this this? person had a question about how to do something and um, in, in using uh, uh, like virtual audio cables and you know different ideas how to get uh, different sounds into the hangout and 
basically what happened was he got 30, you know, 36 comments and they were all, you know, Bruce a answered it and it was right on. And it just helped this guy out. He didn't have to, in less than probably five minutes, he had the answer to his, his, his query. And you're not going to get that in any kind of dialogue in any other environment besides here, besides Google+. I mean, because it's more techie-oriented than just, hi, I'm, I'm having a latte at the local um, coffee shop. You know, it's, it's totally different. And that's why I think the satisfaction is up, because there's value in Google+, and all the postings. Sometimes. In the olden days, we used IRC. George knows what I mean. And you would go to the IRC channel for that software package and say, how do I create a signature file for my shell account? And someone would walk you chapter and verse through how to do it. Um, it's 15 years ago, but it's the same principle. Well, I, I think we all here agree that uh, Google Plus is, a, you know, uh, we can argue about whether it's a social network or not. Personally, I do think it's more than a social network. Uh, just for the a lot of the reasons that you you guys have set forth, uh, it, it's amazing. Uh, you know, when you post something public, how many people can see it? And that's not easily done in Facebook. All right, gang, we're going to move on, and you know what it's time for, don't you? All right. I've got two rumors this week, and uh, they're almost rehashes of past rumors that kind of. You know, uh, rumor will go away, and then somebody else, it'll get repeated enough to where it'll come back around. Here we go. Here we go. I've got, uh, uh, I want to see the thumbs. Let's get the thumbs out here in the neutral position. Amazon is developing a larger Kindle Fire tablet. Up or down? Okay. I've got Larry. Uh, I've got, La let's see, Larry and Bruce are down. And uh, Yvonne's down. Okay, Bruce, how come Kindle wouldn't be developing a larger Kindle Fire tablet? I think it doesn't suit their primary reading purpose. The 7-inch is a great reading style. I think they're going to update that 7-inch, make it thinner, faster, maybe add a camera and a microphone to try to compete against the Nexus 7. They don't need a 10-inch tablet. Okay, Yvonne. Everything that Bruce said, I agree. The primary reason to get a, a, that tablet is to read, and you don't need it. Um, unless you have specific issues with reading, you don't need anything larger. All right. Video yeah. content, video content, video. Sorry. So I'm with Jeff on that. Big, actually, I, I think they will develop a bigger tablet only because a lot of people use them as a little traveling media centers, and Seven's kind of like Time 8. You know, yes. They are also selling videos and movies. Yes. yes. Amazon Prime. Yeah. Well, how popular was their big Kindle that they had? You know, I, I, you know, even their black and white Kindle reader. I don't think it was that popular, but I could be wrong. Well, uh, a 7 inch is great for reading from, but I do agree that uh, they're selling movies and TV shows, too. So, uh, yeah, and that, that 10 inch experience. Papers. I mean, think about it. Uh, I had a bigger tab. I had a smaller tablet and a bigger one. And when I'm reading newspapers, it's much easier to read in New York Times on the more bigger tablet with all the pictures and side stories and stuff. Books, yeah, I can see the smaller tablet. But yeah, magazines. Okay. With the, yeah, same thing, right? All right, next rumor, guys. Apple, get get the thumbs up. Get the thumb neutral position on the thumbs. Apple. Plans a 7.85-inch iPad, says New York Times. All right, I've got, I'm trying to see them there. All right, Joseph, you went down. Hey, why'd you go down? Well, it's not that I don't think they're going to do it, but they're not going to do it this year. I, I predict next year is when they would do it. This, the, this current iPad was uh, Steve Jobs' last baby. He wasn't planning to do it when he was doing it. I think he's going to follow the same model that he's been doing with the iPods, creating different, uh, uh, you know, uh, form factors as time goes on. But this is the third year, and he's following the same model. He wants to keep things simple. They haven't made a time or an effort to work on a manufacturing process for a 10-inch or 7.85-inch quite just yet. But next year, I think they're doing it. Andrew? 
I don't think that they have any plans to do it. Why? Why should they? I mean, they're selling tablets left and right, and they're they're why spend the investment? You know, I think that they think they they can't make as much money off of it, and they're not going to want to meet that price point. Jeff, I think they are going to do it. I think they need to do it, and um, they want to just kind of slow the other tablets down. Why not? They, that's what they're. That's always been their. Mo, modus operandi. Do it better. You know, they'll wait and then do it better, supposedly. And they'll figure out a way to say it's going to be better. Who are they going to partner with to make this 10-inch tablet? They partnered with, uh, seven, with the, seven, the, seven the, the RIM group that made the 7-inch tablet. Who are they going to get to partner on a 10-inch tablet? They're not going to make it themselves. Foxconn again. <laughs> Here, here's, here's my thoughts. Uh, Steve Jobs uh, said that uh, that Apple would never build a smaller tablet; that it would be an inferior user experience. And and I'm going to say this: that if they do it, they've already got all the marketing that they need because uh, uh, Tim Cook can walk out on stage now and he can say, "You will recall that Steve Jobs said we can never do this, but uh, guess what?" We've reinvented that, or we applied for this patent so that we can now do that, and uh, the hype machine will get to rolling and look out the 7.85 tablet. If Apple ever builds one, will be a smashing success. That's my prediction. Gang, I tell you what, I really appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to call this Tech News Week uh, complete. Uh, once again, I thank you guys for participating. Uh, thank anyone who is watching, and uh, we'll do this again in about a week. Peace out, guys. You've been listening to Tech News Week, a weekly series where we talk tech, brought to you by Tech and Coffee, a Google Plus Hangout. We want to invite you to check out our Hangout. You can do so by going to techandcoffee.info and clicking on Join the Hangout, where you can find a link to our existing Hangout. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Tech and Coffee One. We appreciate you joining us, and uh, y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs>